Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. Welcome back to part number two of the shop reconfiguration. Uh, what we'd done in the first video was set up the grinder on the right there. We took out a workbench that was along this wall, put it on this stand here. And what we're going to do in this video is get this second grinder of mine into operation. This is a Black Fox 1 grinder, generation 3. And the stand that I'm using there, I, I honestly don't know why I put wheels on it. I've actually owned that stand since before I was married, so I've probably had it for like 21 or 22 years. And it has spent most of its life as a drill press stand in every one of my home garages. That's what I used it for. Um, but I wanted to cut this down, make it a little shorter so I had a better working height. And so to start off, I just took this big piece of steel that I have and I, I kind of laid my Sharpie on it. That way I can put the marks around the legs. They'll all be even with the ground and level with the ground. And the reason I'm doing it this way is just that those legs are actually at an angle. So if I were to just take a, uh, a square and mark those lines out, they wouldn't be actually parallel to the ground. So I did that hoping that it would work and it's not gonna make too much of a difference either way because I end up finding some feet uh, for this thing, some adjustable feet that have a little bit of play in them. So anyways, we're gonna cut these casters off. Again, I have no clue why I put casters on here. So that little weird grind that you see there was actually part of an experiment I was doing once and, and there may be more on that in the future just for different types of like oyster knives or something like that. But I'm going to cut up some tabs and these we're going to weld to the bottom of the legs and then we'll tap these so we can put those threaded uh, feet in them. My workflow with holes is typically uh, automatic center punch and then fall with a uh, manual center punch with a hammer so I get a nice big divot. And then in this case here, I, I tried holding onto those things by hand. It didn't work so well. So I'm just using those Nipex uh, pliers. Those things are phenomenal. <laughs> here we go to the Tool Time Tuesdays again. I've got a, a video review about those pliers and I'll put a link in the corner there. Um, these things are incredible. I love these Nipex pliers. Uh, honestly, if you've never seen them or used them, you, you use them once and you're going to be like, wow, I need, I need the whole set. That's how good they are. Love these things. At times like this, you know, I don't need to use a vice and I'm not putting my fingers in danger. And I mean, those things bite like crazy. So I, I absolutely love them. I don't use them just for fasteners. I use them for a lot of things like this where I just need a real good grip on something. And again, I tried, uh, tried countersinking in my milling machine, you know, but just pulled too hard. So use a little nipex, bada boom, bada bing. It's so fast, so much faster than clamping stuff. And so I'm just going to tap these out to uh, 3 8 um, What is that standard? 3 8 16, I think, whatever the standard one is. And uh, if you see that I'm tapping at an angle there, that is true. Uh, being as these legs are angled slightly, I thought I should maybe tap it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was purely an accident. <laughs> it actually ended up working in my favor when I did the first one. I saw how cattywampus it was. I thought, oh my goodness, but... Uh, it ended up working really well, and so I did actually put the other ones in crooked as well, so that once I go to set it up, you'll see in a minute here, I can kind of figure out which way the angle goes so I can make sure that we don't run into the sides of the walls of the legs from the inside. It, it might make sense in a minute, might not, I'm not sure. And then I decided to go ahead and just use the drill with those uh, tap sockets because it was so much faster. So you see here I've got a bolt in there. That's for a couple things so that I can see which way the thread is so I can line it up so that leg comes as close to uh, 90 degrees to the ground as possible. And then also what that'll do is prevent any splatter from building up in those tapped holes. And then we just weld them onto the bottom here. And there's a weird part that I, I was sure I filmed, but I guess I didn't. And that was me putting in the little feet pads, but I basically pillaged them off of the stand that came with my belt sander. Um, I, I've got a different setup I'm using for that now. And so the stand that it came with, it got turfed. Well, it's actually outside in my stand collection now. And, uh, yeah, so we just cleaned up these welds a little bit. Got them, uh, so there weren't any sharp edges. I don't want to cut my work boots or anything like that on them. Now back onto the cold cut chop saw. Have you ever wondered what happens when you do not clamp material tight enough in this thing? Well, I'll show you. Boom. Uh, stupid, stupid mistake I made there. Lucky for me, I didn't damage a single tooth. I went over every single tooth and uh, it didn't wreck the plate at all. So that was a lucky one. But you can be sure that I was very, very careful to make sure it was tightened every single cut for the rest of the day. 
Now what I'm doing here is actually repurposing some old angle iron. These are actually shelves off of a bakery rack. And uh, they're galvanized, which isn't ideal. You definitely need to be very cautious when you're working with galvanized electroplated metal because when you heat it up, those fumes are terrible for you. Uh, the zinc in them, uh, you get this thing called zinc chills. I've had it before. It's not very fun at all. Um, but I had my felt respirator on here, and then as soon as I was done welding here, I jacked every door in my garage wide open to kind of ventilate the whole thing. Now, what, what I'm doing here is I'm putting these shelves in place because I thought, you know what, we've got this stand. We lost all that table space. We may as well see if we can make use of it somewhere else. So I'm just going to put three simple shelves in here, um, real cheap and dirty. I'm not even painting this to match. It's like, whatever, man. It's a grinding area. Uh, but it should work well. And again, it always feels good to be using materials, you know. Um, I've got such a scrapyard out there. I can I can build a lot of stuff without ever having to make a trip to town, so... Uh, so all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of putting the grinder where I want it and just using a hole to a drill bit to mark those holes and then we'll take the grinder off and we'll finish drilling all the way through. I'm a bit of a clean freak when I'm when I'm working. I can't stand sawdust laying around on any work surface. I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to bolt the grinder down when it's dirty like this, but uh, I spend <laughs> I spend more time vacuuming, I think, than most people do. That's for sure. Uh, so I just shot a little quick video after the fact of those pads, and you can see they've got a little angle adjustment, and that way I can get this thing really nice and stable. It doesn't matter where I put it if the floor is slightly uneven. You know, the corner of a garage like this, you're gonna have an uneven floor. That, that's how they pour it. So uh, it's nice to have that adjustability in the stand, so I can make sure this thing isn't gonna rock on me. And then we just bolt it down. I have to, actually have to go to the hardware store to buy some some three eighths bolts, but it's just four of them in this thing, and uh, I think it's gonna work out fairly well. So this project really wasn't all that involved. I mean, there's not a lot I had to do. Um, the first one was a little bit more because I had to make a mount for the VFD. And so will this, this next part, the third part where I'm going to set up my disc grinder. But this was just something I was like, you know what, what's the quickest way to get this job done? And uh, that was it. So now I've got these grinders fairly cl close to the height that I like them. They're both almost exactly the same height. And uh, the way this block fo Black Fox is designed, when you flip it over like that, it's a little bit higher, but it's actually a really comfortable working height for me. And again, I have my tools set up much higher. Like my workbenches are really, really high compared to most people's, but I do everything like purpose-built for myself. Just, you may as well be comfortable. So what I'm gonna do now is just cut up some plywood. Again, this was the bottom of that workbench. This was the bottom shelf, so repurposing, reusing, and uh, just cutting these into the sizes that I need. The idea was I wanted a really nice friction fit. I didn't want to have to screw anything down um, to secure those shelves. Uh, the top and the bottom shelf ended up fitting nice and tight, but the, the middle one was a little bit loose, so I might, I might pop a screw in there down the road if I need to. Mostly those shelves, I think, are going to be for things like different contact wheels or platens or all the different accoutrements that you need with your grinder. So this is the type of fit I was really hoping for. Just a nice snug tap it in there. Not crazy, not wrecking the wood, but it's not going anywhere. This one was a little too loose, and the bottom was uh, kind of tight. And again, it's interesting because it's kind of got this pyramid shape with it, so you can't like slide the boards in and drop them down onto the shelf. You know, as soon as you get above the supports, the, everything gets narrower, so you have to measure fairly, fairly tight, but that's also what lets me have this nice tight fit because, you know, just kind of tap it in there and it worked great. All right, guys, this is where we're at so far. We have got the Black Fox 1 Generation 3, my brand new grinder, all set up, ready to go, and a beautiful machine here. This has the VFD built into the base. It's also got uh, options for different switches, whether you want lights, all kinds of different features you can add to this. Even around the back here, you know, they've left you with all these things that are just sealed off. You just pull those out and, you know, you can actually have the power from your light come to here. Um, check out their website. There's a link in the description below. They've got some incredible accessories and features for grinders, really nice lights and stuff, but really excited to have this grinder up and running. Check out how fast this stops. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, and then again, this one will go horizontal. I, I'm hand holding this camera. So you pull this up and then, well, let me just do it real quick. There we go. And uh, now I've got a, a, a horizontal grinder and uh, this thing works beautifully in this configuration. 
stick it in there. But this is just a really, really nice setup and I'm so excited to have this. Now, the one thing I haven't done here yet, the two things I haven't done here, three things actually, uh, I don't have the disc grinder up yet. The plan is to bring another stand in here and I'm probably just gonna use a tire, like an old wheel, steel wheel, bring it up on a vice. I've got one out, again, out my scrap pile that I think is gonna work for this. And then the dust collection has not yet been hooked up. And I'm not gonna bring dust collection to this grinder. I'm just gonna leave it for the disc grinder and then this one because uh, the dust collection I use for handle work, for kydex work, and for leather work. Actually, I bring all my leather sheaths out here and trim the edges up. So uh, hopefully I can get that uh, probably same similar thing I had before, like one main place and then a couple of gates, like those blast gates or whatever they call them so I can isolate the different machine. And then uh, eventually, ultimately, I wouldn't mind getting my dust collection off the floor. Um, I use it also for my sandblast cabinet, so that's why all three of these machines, the sandblaster, the disc grinder, and then this belt grinder kind of need to be in the same area, but I think this is gonna work well. We might end up scooting everything this way just a touch, but in the next video, I'm probably not gonna be getting onto this project for a few days here. I need to focus on some other things. Um, but in the next video, we'll go ahead and set up our disc grinder, and then I'm not sure if we're gonna quite tackle an adjustable variable like angle rest for it yet, but that is coming. Uh, in the interim, I've got this new fandangled thing that I, I made here, and it works really great. And I think I might put this on its own arm so I can dedicate that to this grinder. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.